Hi, it's Shannon back from houseimprovements.com. In this video, I want to show you how to use a jigsaw. So I've got three examples here of the different jigsaws that I own. Uh, obviously, nobody's sponsoring our video. This is just three random jigsaws. Um, and, and each one of them, they all basically got the same functions, but they're obviously a lot of age difference in some of them and a couple different features in some, some of them. So your, your basic, basic jigsaw, all of them are going to have an adjustable shoe, which this is this piece here. Uh, they're all going to have a trigger, obviously, and they're all going to have a shaft here for the blade to install into. Now, most good jigsaws are also going to have a little lever here on the side. You can see it on all of these. And this uh, basically adjusts the blade so that it can move kind of in an oscillating fashion and it'll make a quicker cut. It'll be a little rougher, but it'll speed up the process. So if you're doing some fine cutting and you, and you know things need to be precise, you'll have this turned all the way forward. Basically what it is, is it's pushing this little arm right here, either tight against the blade for more accuracy, or it's moving it away so the blade can actually have some movement to it. So when it's cutting, it's, it's not just cutting straight up and down, it's kind of cutting like this and it just makes it just makes it uh, cut quicker um, some of the jigsaws uh, this one's probably better maybe to sh no, I don't know if you can see that some of the jigsaws will have some speed settings I don't know if you can see this little dial on the trigger it has a little dial here and you can uh, adjust the actual speed I, I don't honestly know how often you'll ever use that because I never do um, but anyway some of them have it so some of them also will have where you can lock the trigger on when you're using it these two both do that this one doesn't this one actually has a lock to lock the tr trigger out so you can't squeeze it or bump it on by accident it's kind of a safety feature okay so uh, that now the shoes I said how they're adjustable and uh, this one here is the easiest one to show you. Um, this one needs a wrench, an Allen wrench, to adjust the shoe and to change the blade. Uh, this one needs an Allen wrench as well, which is actually conveniently on the cord, but this one's just easier to show you. This one has a lever right here, so you can tilt the shoe to cut different angles if you wanted to. But it's just, you don't need a tool to do it. I don't think I have it straight. Okay, so it's kind of toolless. Now, like I mentioned with this one, you need the wrench to change the blade to actually get the blade out, where these two are toolless again. So this one here, if I was gonna change the blade, it has a lever on the front, which allows the blade to come out. And then the blade can go back in and lock back in. This one here, you pull this end up and you twist it to release the clamp in here and the blade comes out, put the blade back in, twist it back up, and then snap that down. So the toolless function is kind of nice. It's uh, one less thing you're gonna lose. I'm talking about these wrenches. They're always gonna disappear, although this one's got a pretty good holder on it. So anyways, those are the main, main kind of uh, functions you're gonna find with the jigsaw. Obviously these two are corded, this one's battery operated, no big deal. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is the uh, blades. So when it comes to blades, I've got some examples here. Some are used, some are new. And uh, there's, there's pretty much two different styles of blades. Some are going to have a T-shank like this one. And then these other ones over here are, are basically what they call a U-shank. Uh, so this one specifically. Usually there'd be actually a U-shape cut in the very top here where this first hole is, but this one doesn't have it. But that's, that'd still be referred to as a U-shank. This one here is a combination. It would work in either jigsaw. So the U-shape blades are basically used in the jigsaws or the combination blade will be used in the jigsaws that have an actual Allen screw here to clamp the blade into place. The T blades are for saws like these where they have, uh, you know, you don't need a tool to, to put it in and out. The combinations would work in these as well, but this won't work in that, okay? So those are the two different styles you're going to have. The blades come in uh, what they call um, TPI, 
which is teeth per inch. So basically that's just how fine of teeth you have. Like this one here is 24 teeth per inch. You can see they're very fine. That's more of a metal cutting blade, really fine work. This one's 14 teeth per inch. Okay, so you can start to, on the camera, see the actual blades probably better. Uh, this one is 10 per inch. Most of the rest of these are 10 per inch. So they're, uh, they're pretty aggressive blade, quick cutting. Um, now something else to look at, if I just move these ones out of the way, here's two almost identical blades. They're both uh, 10 teeth per inch, but this one's an up cutting blade. So the blade is cutting on the upstroke of the saw, which is the most common. This is a down cut cutting blade. So if you look closely there, you can see the teeth are actually angled opposite of each other. These ones angling up, these ones angling down. So this one will cut on the down stroke. Where that's kind of handy is if you've, you've got to cut on the finished surface of material, like say a countertop when you're cutting the sink out. So you don't want it to cut on the upstroke and maybe chip the edge. You want it to cut it down so it's leaving you a nice clean cut on the, on the top edge. So that's kind of the two differences on that. If you're using a downstroke blade, you're going to find uh, it's a lot more energy needed to hold that saw firmly on your work surface because it's kind of working against you. It's, it's wanting to kick up a little bit because the blades are catching as they're pushing down. Where the other ones, they're catching as, it, as the blade's stroking up, which is pulling the tool towards the uh, surface you're cutting. So those are the differences there. Now you might notice this one's quite a bit thinner this direction than all the rest of those. So this one would be good if you're doing a lot of detailed work where you need to scroll around. It'll turn nice and easily. These will all turn, but this one will turn much much sharper. This blade here is one that I've modified. You can see how it's shorter than the others and I've actually cut that blade off. So I was obviously cutting something where I couldn't have too much blade sticking through the material or it was going to damage something below so I cut that off so that it would uh, just cut the surface that I was wanting to cut. Okay so I, I basically showed you how to change the blades so we don't need to go through that again. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of these Basic safety you need for using a jigsaw is you're going to want to use safety glasses and maybe ear protection. You also want to uh, be careful because you're a lot of times you're, well, mostly you're cutting blindly. So the material you're cutting, you're working from one side, you can't see what's underneath. So you need to be sure you know what's underneath the area you're, you're cutting. So you're not cutting through wires or uh, uh, plumbing or somebody's hand or whatever. <laughs> okay, so you need to be careful of that. When you're cutting, uh, like I'm going to here in a minute, uh, like I just want to cut some shapes out of this piece of wood and I want to hang it off my workbench. So I'm making sure I hang it off far enough so I'm not cutting into the edge of the workbench too. Okay. So I'm gonna show you a couple different things about cutting with a jigsaw. So if you've got you've got this shape here, the circle you want to cut out. Okay, uh, so most people will be really familiar with being able to, within the whatever I'm cutting, I can drill a hole in order to get my blade through and started. So just simply need a drill bit that's big enough. So I can create a hole so that I can now get my blade down into to start my cut. Again, I'm making sure I'm not cutting the table or anything below, but now I've got my blade through the surface and I can make my cut. Okay, so I just go all the way around. Now what if I didn't have my drill with a, with a drill bit or whatever, and I just had a solid circle here still with no cuts in it, I can do a plunge cut. So to do a plunge cut, you basically rotate the um, jigsaw on the front of the shoe, on the nose of the shoe, and you're gonna stand it on end, you're gonna squeeze the trigger and get the blade going, and then you're gonna just basically lower the, the blade through the material, but keeping the shoe on the bottom. Now you have to go slow, and uh, you need to just be wary that if that blade catches, it can 
jump on you, but normally once you do this a few times, you'll get the gist of it. So I'll just show you here how I'm going to plunge cut in there. Okay, so you can see how that really wasn't that bad. And this is thin material, so it's, it's honestly usually a little easier to cut thin material. So then I could just continue on like I, like I did there a minute ago to cut that out. Okay, same thing with a square. Same idea, you could use, do, a, do plunge cutting anywhere in there and get started, or you could drill a hole in each corner or one corner and you make your way around that square or that rectangle. So I think that video there should give you a good idea what to expect when you're using a jigsaw and how to safely use it. So I appreciate you watching the video. I hope that you uh, liked the video. So smash the thumbs up button down there. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't and hit the bell icon after that to set up notifications as well. Thanks for watching.